it's an honor to speak to such a young audience. It makes me also feel a little bit old, but uh, it's also an honor to talk with the next generation. Uh, so uh, I will share my slides. What I do, uh, uh, you also under, uh, need to understand a little bit where I come from. So I'm, I'm Mark. I, I, I've started 12 companies myself in very various uh, businesses. Uh, I was uh, uh, one of the first, uh, the first uh, importer of dyes and vacuum cleaners uh, 25 years ago. Uh, and started, uh, uh, made it quite successful and, and started my second business and I was also successful. And I thought, hey, I can do it also a third time. And uh, that failed. Uh, a fourth time uh, is also failed. The fifth time um, uh, failed and the sixth time failed as well. So I thought like, oh, okay, two successes, four <laughs> failures. Uh, but of course, I, I never give up. Uh, and, and then I started a seventh venture. And that was for me an, an epiphany. Uh, because the epiphany was uh, first based on an idea to um, um, uh, sell biological baby food to healthy mums. And uh, within one and a half years or two years of inception, it pivoted into a group a buying platform for a green energy. Um, uh, so going from a baby food to a group buying platform for green energy is quite some uh, 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 some some uh, turnaround, but it was a, a, an eye opener for me. And based on that methodology, I uh, invested in in, in, in other uh, and started uh, in, in other companies, and they become all 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 became a success. And, and my biggest learning uh, because of it was that if you start focusing on the on the four M's of, of uh, I, I jokingly uh, four M's of Mark because every single failure was based on uh, failing in one of those M's. Uh, a market uh, choose your your market in very small way um, um, and then scale it. A model uh, business model is really important. Management the founders are really important, and momentum is key. Uh, momentum for me. Uh, was a failure in 2000 where I built a website where you could order uh, or sort of make a reservation for uh, online for a restaurant and uh, we, we we developed a platform it was capable in doing everything and then we start selling it to the first restaurants and they were looking at us like okay and how do I need to accept the reservation well by mail okay uh, we don't have mail okay uh, that was a problem yeah, because uh, it was embedded in our technology. And back then, uh, email uh, was uh, some sort of a early stage uh, uh, invention. So what I did was uh, waterfall planning. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, uh, big plans, and then we start building, and then uh, uh, suddenly uh, uh, we left it in the market. Uh, we showed it to the market and we were kicked out it was uh, total to total rubbish and 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 back then one 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 of the biggest uh, so i was uh, comparing myself with uh, all kinds of fuck ups and this was ba back then by far the biggest one webfan was what we now call uh, picnic uh, but then in the us and it was around the same years and they uh, uh, invested a total amount of 1.2 billion dollars in it. Uh, it was executed by very, very, very experienced executives from uh, Boston, from uh, Boston uh, consultants, uh, McKinsey, uh, uh, and etc. And, 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 and it failed because the, the momentum was not right. They poured a lot of money in it, but the momentum was not there. So I was uh, I was tapping myself on the shoulder back then and like, okay, uh, uh, my fucker was a little bit smaller than this one. And 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 um, um, based on 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 that findings, uh, I kept on uh, uh, developing a plan on how can we make it uh, more safe to start a business. Uh, uh, and I came up with um, um, nah, very small products uh, uh, um, 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 uh, to test the market first and then to launch. And then I read a book in 2010 uh, from from a from a writer, also an entrepreneur. And uh, he was uh, telling about the, the, the four steps to epiphany. And it was a book uh, written by Steve Blank. And one of his students came uh, with another book, and it's called Lean Startup. Um, uh, Lean uh, is from the manufacturing principles of Lean Six Sigma. And what Lean is all about is uh, uh, that, that you first start uh, uh, and then build something really small and uh, iterate uh, until you found uh, 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 something that works. Uh, 
And therefore, uh, what I always say, a startup is a temporary organization. Yeah, it's not a small version of a big corporate. It is a temporary organization with only goal is to find a repeatable and scalable business model. And then I always put uh, behind it until the money run, run, until you run out of money. Because that is the clear goal of every single uh, startup, that, that you do a lot of experiments, and based on the experiments, you find a repeatable, scalable business model. And 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 we started with a concept, a uh, very high high level concept of a platform where you could order uh, a baby food online. And although we were talking with uh, and engaging with a lot of first customers, they they never bought it because we 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 put a, a, an MVP uh, minimum viable product uh, online where people uh, start ordering uh, uh, in a fashionable way, fashionable way, but also left their credit card details. And out of the hundreds of people people that we've been talking to who were really, really enthusiastic about our approach, they didn't order anything at all. So although we found a, a, a problem to solve, but it was not that big that they were willing to pay for it. And um, 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 and, 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 and based on that, we, we started a conversation with all those people and we pivoted into a group buying platform for green energy. And this is how, how, how you roll. You, you, you test, iterate, test, iterate, test, iterate until something that, that, that works, right? And, and, and within the first phase of a startup, failure equals progress. Yeah, everything you, every, every time you fail, you learn something that doesn't work. So you need to change it and to see if it, if it works. And lean startup is a systematic process for iterating from a plan yeah, A to a plan that works before running out of resources. Iterative means plan, build, try, plan, build, try, plan, build, try, plan, etc. So you build something, you measure something, and you learn uh, out of it and rebuild or reshape. And these are the four steps of epiphany that I was just referring to. And the four steps of epiphany is very simple. Step A, B, C, and D. Where in phase A, you don't do anything, only listen. Only listen to your proposed customers. And that's where a lot of uh, uh, startups are failing at because they start with sometimes uh, even uh, uh, start with phase C and then they go back to A. Uh, 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 they start building something. Uh, uh, I call them um, um, fantastic solutions in search for a problem to solve. And in many cases, it doesn't work. Uh, because you need to iterate, uh, and iterate uh, means that you, based on 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 the feedback of of a customer, you will iterate the product in very high speed. So not like multiple levels of software, no, in very high speed. And there, that that is where 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 the beauty kicks in. So what in essence, uh, what I what I did um, uh, based on on all those uh, companies that I've invested in, I've created a 72 step venture development program where all the ventures are going through those phases and based on the progress in those phases, we invest in the venture. We always start with uh, determining the, the, the minimum uh, uh, viable team, uh, the maximum two, minimum uh, two founders, maximum three founders, always a tech person in it, always a business person in it, and always uh, uh, some sort of a, a operator uh, in it. And based on the, the progress that they're making, we, we, we invest an increasing amount of, of, of money. And, and these are the four steps to Epiphany built in. And, and, and in essence, there are two major main phases in the company. You're in search. So on the left side, this is really a startup a search phase, looking for, uh, for something that works. And after you found a product market fit, you go into execution. So the, the search phase uh, uh, is one of the most underestimated parts of, of, of an early stage company. And, and what the, the search phase really needs to do is that during your customer discovery, you don't build anything. You don't show your product. You don't show your solution. You only listen whether the customer has a problem to solve, a problem solution fit. And based on that confirmation, you start building a first iteration uh, uh, um, 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 a minimum uh, a, a product that uh, uh, shows a fit to the problem uh, and the solution you've defined. 
And based on, on that feedback, you are asking uh, to the customers, are, are you okay with it? And, 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 and second question, are you willing to pay for it? Because if you don't have a paying customer, you have a hobby, not a business. Without a paying customer, you will never have a business, a growing business. So that's why it is really important. So the customer validation is, yeah, uh, are they willing to pay for it? Yeah, uh, uh, because we've learned, I've learned the hard way, that people say that they like the product, but buying or saying are two different, uh, two, two different things. So the first phase, the customer discovery, is all about understanding the customers. And the second phase is show the MVP, yeah, whether they are willing to buy it. Eating the dog food, we always say. I think uh, uh, one of the examples is, is Flickr. Yeah, it started as a never-ending uh, gaming platform. Yeah, you can start uh, playing games forever. And now it pivoted into a photo sharing because based on the, the iteration of the plat platform, they saw that a lot of their users were sharing the pictures. So they pivoted the, the, the whole uh, um, uh, technology into a share sharing uh, a photo uh, platform. And, and uh, this is also an example. Groupon uh, was a, it's, they started as a collective uh, a tipping point uh, a, a website where you said, okay, I'm going to buy uh, 500 I iPhones and you collect uh, 500 people to buy together uh, an iPhone and you get a discount because you buy 500 iPhones. But what they saw is that a lot of people were uploading uh, uh, um, um, marketing actions uh, uh, um, uh, on the platform. Uh, come eat at, uh, at our restaurant for 10 people. Uh, come uh, uh, have, have, a, uh, have a, 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 a bowling evening with 12 people with a discount. And they pivoted into an online marketing platform and became really successful at it. One of the easiest tools to use and understand uh, a business is uh, a business model canvas. Uh, and and, and in, in the start, we, we, we use the lean canvas because it's much more uh, address, uh, uh, much more uh, uh, fitted for, for an early stage companies. Because one of the most, most uh, important things when you start a business is that you have a business model. Yeah? And it describes the rationale of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. You need to create value, then you deliver the value to, to the customer, and then, of course, they are uh, paying for it. And and in, in and this is in the core what it's all about. You you you, you always start with what you are building your value proposition, then to the left side what you uh, how you're going to build it, and on the uh, and on the other side who you are you are targeting on your customers yeah your customer segments. One of the the mistakes that I made that I was addressing the whole market. Well, if you end up with every customer, focusing on every customer, you will end up with no customer. And that's why focusing on uh, the first customer who has the biggest problem first, then you get also the feedback to improve the product, which is of course from utmost uh, importance for uh, you you guys, yeah? the, 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 the product people. And this is how a canvas looks like. Uh, have a have a have a read about it. I think it's really uh, important to understand also from tech people, product people, how this uh, business model uh, canvas works, because it 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 eases up the conversation um, 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 uh, with a lot of uh, stakeholders. Now, and, and as said earlier, we use the lean canvas. It is a little bit the same principles, but more focus on the problem solution. Yeah, and, and, and what problem do you want to solve? What solution do you have in mind? Uh, what key metrics you need to map? What is your unique value proposition? The same story, unfair advantage, the channels, uh, which channels are you using to address the customers? And of course, which customers are you focusing on? Uh, have a look at both canvases. I think it's a really learning full experience uh, for, 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 for every, every reader. Um, um, uh, and in fact, the only way to win is to iterate faster than the competition. The, the better you are in executing this, the, 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 the faster you will get to revenue. 
and and th 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 this delivers a lot of pressure on the product uh, people, right? Because whoa, 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 Jesus, we need to iterate again, again, again. Um, um, Emmer will will probably state a, a few a few examples uh, later on, but we also had a discussion like, uh, what's going on, Mark? Uh, what are we doing? Yeah, and and therefore we always embed in every venture that we've invested in a culture of rapid experimentation and iter iteration, and that's um, um, uh, also only done based on facts. Uh, if if somebody in the team says, yeah, I think the color red is 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 nice, I don't give a shit about what you think. Prove it. Yeah, uh, uh, go, set up, put it online and see uh, what's the better better conversion rate, uh, uh, which, which which color. So always fact based instead of faith based decision. And 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 one of the key things we we always do to find out is experimental design. So we really find an easy uh, way to uh, run experiments. Yeah, and then you create an idea, you build something, uh, you measure, then you read the data you've learned, and then you test, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, and 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 mind you, um, uh, big companies um, uh, do experiments on a daily basis. Uh, probably every one of you. Um, uh, was part of an experiment on on these three uh, 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 websites uh, that that uh, a button was replaced somewhere else or a color was 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 changed or whatever. Uh, it's a really good way of um, a fact based uh, a decision instead of faith based decision. And what most startups are failing at is mapping out through experiments and then focused on. Uh, uh, focusing on the validation of the most riskiest assumption. Uh, and, and in my case, uh, uh, when I go back to the, the story about the baby food, uh, I assume that the people that 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 that, that talked about with us were willing to pay uh, two, three times more money for uh, uh, for for baby food uh, as biological baby food uh, as they were willing to pay for it in a supermarket. <clears throat> I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Nobody. Nobody is like, no, we, I'm not going to pay three times more for it. Forget it. So uh, 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 thanks through our experiment, uh, by letting them fill in their details and credit card details, we saw that nobody, really nobody wanted to to to, to pay three times more, uh, more, more for this. And so the, the company was, also that idea failed, but we learned a lot. And so if you run experiments, you always pick the riskiest, uh, you brainstorm, you break it in smaller units, test, test, uh, and, 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 and run uh, and review to make those decisions. And what you do from a product perspective um, is running those uh, small experiments, help the business team to run those uh, uh, um, uh, small ex experiments and to show that you have found what we call a product market fit. So we have built a product that fits a specific market. Yeah, and if you do experiments, you 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 always state what do I want to learn? How will we measure this? And and what are we going to build to get the data? And especially the last part is really important from your perspective. What do we need to build to get the data? Um, uh, um, um, uh, and 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 not like in 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 a six month development cycle. No, boom, 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 short cycles, because uh, if you stack all those experiments, you have a final uh, uh, end product. And and you always use uh, 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 qualitative and quantitative data to prove. Yeah. So one of the key assets we always do is talk with your customers. I even kicked uh, out a lot of product people, uh, uh, and I put the product people on our customer uh, uh, care uh, center. And they, they 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 for me uh, when when I was uh, starting just eat the the, the 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 technical people they needed to have two hours on customer care because it is also a feedback loop of for, for them and to understand what their customers uh, are and their needs. And 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 what I always also uh, say to a lot of founders that that they, they, they if they think they can start a business solely after or behind their computer, think again, because the best feedback is always a uh, face to face. Now nowadays a little bit more more difficult, but uh, you can also do it by by a hangout like this. And uh, A/B testing is, is of course your friend. And based on uh, filling that canvas, uh, uh, all those assumptions, you test, 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 and at the end. The goal is to have everything green. So what does that mean from a product perspective, right? Because 
taking it this, this, this in consideration, it's like, oh, holy shit, uh, what do I need? Where do I need to start? Now, therefore, I'm really, really happy that uh, Emre is joining this call. I met Emre a few years ago, and I was really happy that he was willing to, to join uh, our, 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 our adventure. And of course, I'm also really proud that he, he he's still there, but uh, he's also taking over uh, the, his, his responsibility about to talk to you and explain you what this, this means from a product perspective. Emre, floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. So yeah, as, as Mark said, uh, I'm going to try to explain how to support this lean uh, mindset, the lean business uh, process from the tech and product perspective. And I assume most of you will have your first job or you are really, really early in your careers. And I try to give you valuable uh, hints uh, about about the uh, ecosystem, development ecosystem. So very, very short summary where I'm, uh, I have a comp computer science background, uh, more than 10 years hands-on experience and the, the tech leadership uh, experience in companies like uh, Cool Blue or Deloitte, but I also work at different uh, startups I also created my own uh, small product seven, eight years ago, and I sold it, and I moved to Netherlands. Yeah. So the order of my talk is going to be, first, I'm going to talk about uh, what is UNL is all about, and very briefly, what we try to achieve, and my vision about the software, as I said, how we support this mentality, this, this, this process from the tech perspective. And also, I'd like to discuss, uh, show you that how we actually plan and organize our teams, our tech teams, because it's super important to, to let the people know why they are doing what they are doing. So I believe it's huge, very, very important topic to mention. And in the end, I'm more than happy to uh, answer your questions. But if you don't have time, please find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I try my best to answer your questions if you have any. So, UNL is about the locations, right? It stands for unique named locations. So, what we do at UNL is our ultimate goal is to create new generation of location-based infrastructure. What I mean, like instead of using the Google Maps or uh, Mapbox or Apple Maps, Hopefully, people start creating location-based application by using this infrastructure. Uh, the unique proposition we, we, we make here is that we try we convert two-dimensional coordinate system to one-dimensional grid system and assign unique IDs to every location so that you can program them because if you have one dimensional id you are going to be able to make a http request to these locations and suddenly they become alive so that's why we say we try to create the internet of places uh, by giving a unique location id so everywhere in the world and then make it easier to create the location-based services. Uh, we have available, available sort of a demo and the demo product uh, for end user is called UNL Places. If if you want to take a look, please don't download it on your iOS or Android phones. So as Mark mentioned many times, we need to build, we need to test, and we need to measure, right? But how are we going to do this thing from the product perspective or from the uh, tech perspective. So it's really easy to say it. Uh, how are we going to do that? And many, many companies failed uh, uh, in that process. So hopefully, uh, uh, the things that I'm going to say uh, is going to make sense to you, and you can, you can use it in your next journey if it's a startup. So. First of all, guys, I believe 
software is a life form. We need software that survives, right? So if you check the evolution, it is not the most intellectual of the spaces that survives. It's not the strongest that survives, but the spaces that survive is the one that is able to best to adapt and adjust to changing environment which it finds itself. Charles Darwin said that, right? So what does it mean? We need to create a product in a way it should ready to change from every aspect. So that's why I use this analogy, software is a life form, because the way we adapt to the world, for example, as a human being, every single cell in your body dying every day. And the millions of one, millions of them are being created every day to adapt to new environment. Because the cells are small, we get rid of them, we create the new one to adapt the new situation. Look, I'm not saying we maintaining the cells, I'm saying we destroy them and create the new one. So therefore, the software, we, there are many things we can learn from this analogy. That's all I'm trying to say. So, first, however, before we create the uh, software, we need to know what we're going to build, right? We need a proper plan. Uh, everybody needs to align in one vision. Everybody needs to know why we are doing what we are doing. And the way we do it at UNL uh, is very straightforward. There are a couple of caveats on this, and I will explain. So, of course, we use the sprints, and I assume everybody uh, aware of how Scrum methodology works, two-week sprints, and we have the sprint planning. We decide what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, split the task, bam, bam, bam. For two weeks, we try to deliver, right? However, in my experience, especially at startups and not uh, most of the big companies, most of the time we don't know what we are doing. And it's not clear how we're going to do it. So that's why we decided to use OKRs, it stands for the objective key results. And we set these goals between six weeks and 12 weeks. And every two weeks in the sprint planning, we try to achieve some part of it, not all the goal, but some part of it, right? And every two weeks then, we again, in the retrospective, we measure, okay, how did it go, guys? What are the things that we were not happy? Or what are the things that worked for us? And then re-evaluate the plan, make another plan until we achieve the goal that we set. The important part is here is that every two weeks, you need to create chunk of smaller chunks of tasks. Try to, uh, that, that, that once, once you finish all these tasks, you should have some part of the bigger goal. That's the most important thing. But what, I'm what, what I like to add here is that when I start my journey as a software engineer, I, the lack of leadership in the industry was very disappointing for me because most of the time, nobody told us why we are doing what we are doing. And once you started there, or if you lead a team, please, please, please try to explain everything from the business sides because engineers, we are not stupid. We want to know what's going on. And if you are a junior person or if you don't have the leadership position, please demand, ask why we are doing this, why we are doing what we are doing. It's super important to keep motivated. Otherwise, we are slaves with money. So please demand. So how we build? Uh, as we said, OK, we planned. We know what we're going to do. Especially in the tech industry, 
there are people that were very fanatic to the certain technologies. But what I want to make it clear that important thing is the problem, not the solution, because there are many, many different ways to the, uh, uh, to the problem. You can solve in many different ways. So therefore, first, understand the problem, right? Second, you need to know fundamentals of the computer science. Guys, this is important. If you want to work for Google, if you want to work for Cool Blue, if you want to work for Deloitte, they're not going to give you API to implement and connect to database. They're going to ask you a problem, and they're going to ask you which data structure are you going to use, and what's going to be the time complexity of that function. So you need to know the basic of this. And every time you see a problem, try to go to the basic. For example, if you're building a game, go to the basic until the physics, until the Newton physics, unless you do uh, quantum uh, computation for space, because Newton, uh, the rules, the law is enough for the world. Go to the deep. You need to know what's going on. Knowing the tools or knowing the language is not enough. You need to know how it works, especially in this day. Every day, there is a new language. If you know the core, if you know the basic, the new technology is just going to take one week to understand. First, yeah, you need to know which uh, data structure you need, uh, which uh, uh, algorithms you need to use. Third, you need to build small, as I said uh, in the beginning, like a cells, so that you can destroy it and create the new one. Like think from the mathematical point of view. Actually, the whole computer science based on the mathematical uh, formulas, right? The functions, the method, they're all coming from mathematical references, terminologies. So therefore, when you create a function, when you create a service, try to use or try to do one thing and one thing only. Therefore, there must be a one input and one output. If you need to change the input, change the function itself and get rid of the current one, create the new one. If input and output are same, OK, that's fine. And the fourth one is important. When you create this function or services, they need to be composable, right? So that you don't need to build from scratch everything. You can take from something here, you can take from something here and compose it to adopt the new environment. For example, if we have 200 years only snow, some of them are going to die, but the ones that you're going to adopt probably going to have much more hair in their body because they going to adapt. So the software also needs to be this way. So this is a, a very high level of our architecture at UNL. Uh, I want to put this here because it looks very, very similar the couple uh, slides before the old system part that the APIs and the, the services uh, have unique and uh, decoupled each other. They are on databases. There is a one brain which handles the events, like uh, listening the uh, cells, listen the brain uh, signals. So that's why I wanted to put here this high level part. Of course, and then you build. We need to test it, right? But what I mean test is not manual test, actually. What I'm trying to hear is that you need to deploy it somewhere so that the product people or testers or the users can reach it, right? And it needs to be fast. And it shouldn't break the current functionality. So how are we going to do that? Therefore, I highly recommend to use containers in your, uh, in your system so that the things working at your local host is going to work on your servers as well. 
and it's going to be easier for you to scale all the system if you use containers. It gives you the flexibility. At UNL, we use Terraform to provision the cloud. Uh, for example, everything we do at uh, Google Cloud, it's written as a code. So we don't do the manual job because human mean is error. Try to remove human process, uh, human interaction from this process as much as possible. And of course, combine these things like uh, tools like GitLab CI or GitHub Action or Circle CI, whatever you are comfortable be, with. But the whole main goal is that you need a continuous integration system and you need to deploy fast you, so that you can get the, the data, test data uh, from the users or from the system. Uh, for example, this one, what you see here, in one day, we deploy many, many different features. And as you see, some of them failed. That's OK. That's OK. If you can control these things without breaking the current environment by using these technologies I said, you can experiment many crazy things. And if they are good, perfect, you are lucky. Merge it test with customers or merge it into the production. This is exactly what Mark was telling about. Try crazy things, especially if you are at startup. As I said again, we, we don't know what we are doing. We need to see. So you cannot ass assume anything. So therefore, you need to be able to test even the most crazy idea available there. Yeah. So this is a screenshot that we, we tried many, many things at, at one day. OK, second one, of course, we need to get those data, right? The, we cannot only rely what uh, potential customer is telling us. We need to read the data. We need to collect the data. So of course, uh, you can uh, track the data, Google, Hotjar. These are very standard things. But the things that I want to stress here, the split IO. You don't need to use split IO exactly, but the, you, it's better if you use feature flex so that one feature can be used a certain group of user uh, or the other feature can be used for another certain user so that you can have the a b testing with this feature flex and get much many more data so that you can analyze because if you don't have data you cannot analyze if you cannot analyze you cannot optimize that's all about it and at UNL, we use Sentry for error tracking because it's super important for us. If something happens bad, core of the system, we need to know before customer realizes, right? So therefore, we use centralized error tracking. And every time some, something bad happens, for example, a function throws an exception that we were not expecting, then we are able to get these messages and act immediately. So it is important. And for performance and smoke tests, we use Keys6.io. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, you run the performance tests with unique users, and uh, you get very good uh, uh, analytical data and the graphs and everything. I, I recommend that. Uh, but as I said, yeah, there are many other tools as well. For example, uh, this sequence shot is coming from our Grafana dashboard, where we analyze all the time. And we have many, many alerts about what's going on in our system, if everything goes well. And if something bad, we get the alerts and we, we act immediately. Again, as I said, code actually is the liability. What we try to do, we create the system. System is the asset. Every code you write, make it disposable so that you can write better one. Our ultimate goal is to create a system, right? So that, yeah, please remember code is the liability, system is the asset, and our goal is to create the system that can scale. So thank you so much. Again, as I said, please find me on LinkedIn if you have any more questions. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mark Emre, for the insightful presentations and the talks. I really appreciated the, uh, the knowledge related to like the testing and how, you know, uh, from the business perspective, how this process is driven and from the uh, CTO perspective, how, you know, this is happening and what kind of like, uh, it was great to see actually a couple of examples of the tools that uh, students could uh, maybe use, you know. I see a couple of students in the call that are currently doing an internship. So they per se are working in a company, which is kind of cool because I guess they realize the importance of lean i think in almost every single company when you start working they talk about this lean methodology and nobody knows what is that until you open the book and actually read something about it now besides yeah. that uh, victoria uh, the, the lean is not always uh, lean and they, they're like <laughs> oh yeah, no, we're a very lean lean machine yeah, we have uh, very cheap uh, uh, cheap services no idiot that's not lean lean is all about uh, 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 fast iteration that's uh, but also a systematic approach yeah which mm -hmm. is supported by a systematic uh, uh, system uh, thinking like 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 emory is just explaining so the, the the combination is is the the the, the power to success and 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 within my so during my years at started boot camp uh, we've accelerated more than 800 companies in 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 in, in the past eight years and i think uh, one of the core uh, failure uh, i think more than 60 percent failed because of it was the the interaction between the product and the business was total shit Total, total shit. I even had one one company. They took them one and a half years to develop an MVP. So fuck off, uh, one and a <laughs> half year MVP. It's, it's totally ridiculous. But this is something that actually I wanted to to ask. So right now we are having the Q and A part, guys. So prepare yeah. your questions. But I want to open Bring up the Q and A with. Uh, a little bit of a comment from uh, what Emre said. Uh, one of the, the, the suggestions of Emre to the students was like, always ask why you are building what you're building, right? Because there is a big discrepancy between uh, the, the strategic, like the, the management, right? And then the product people. My question to you is, is this still the case nowadays where, you know, technology is the core of a company, right? Because especially for the tech-driven companies, right? That they build tech platforms. So is this still the case or are we improving? Uh, I hope we are improving, but when I start, as I said, this journey, especially when I start working big companies, when I start meeting with people from the high level, it was really disappointed that they don't know anything. They just know how to talk. <laughs> and therefore, it's, it starts from top down, right? So if, you don't, if the person in the top doesn't know, it affects others and it goes down. So that's why from bottom, we need to ask why we are doing this. What's, why is important? Tell us so that we can be motivated. That's the main reason I always see breakdowns because people are working, but they don't know why they are working. It's not all about money. After some time, like if you don't make millions per month, it doesn't change your lifestyle. So you need to have the purpose and the leaderships are crucial to keep at telling why we are doing what we are doing so that we can work as one all together. And, and Emre, how do I suck at it at a zero to 10 level? <laughs> the, you suck at it? No. no, no. Do I suck at, at, at telling what, what we are doing? Because uh, it's also... No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, not, no. Not in the, I'm, I'm talking about the big... No, no, no. no. It's, it's just an honest question uh, because I will not be a 10. But 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 but, but for, do I uh, uh, let you know enough why we are doing this? Yeah, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't work here. Oh, right? okay. No, thank, thank you. So, from a zero to ten level, how do I score? Five and uh, six. Ten, of course. Ten, of, of ten? course. Like, uh, why, why, why would I? Why would I work here otherwise? 
<laughs> I, I'm an engineer, like I can't find oh, a yeah. job. In but the Mark, Mar but Mark, yeah. if you would do this mistake as well, yeah. then yeah. I would feel very sorry for the other companies. You know, you're yeah. one of the leaders in the, in the market on this, so you you're the great example. So if if you wouldn't yeah. do it, then I have no hope for the corporations and yeah. the one, other one, one hundred percent agree, but never be too arrogant to ask because uh, I, I sometimes also uh, walk very fast, uh, and and then if you if you don't watch out, then you're the, the madman in front of the band, right? And like, where the fuck is, is the rest of the band? And that's why I always ask on on a regular basis: Am I still, am I am I still your ten, Emily? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Anybody okay. else has questions? You can unmute yourself, guys, if you want. Not necessarily to write it in the uh, in the chat. Yeah, um, I have a question because we've talked quite a bit technical, but I, the question is for both of you. Uh, first, for you, Mark. Is can you tell anything about good personal qualities to have if you um, will be an entrepreneur or do a startup? And for you, Emre, it will actually be the same with good personal qualities, but then more focused on being a developer. Okay, Emma, you start. Yeah, uh, the, for being a developer, good personality for me to ask for help. Don't go to your corner and. If you don't know, if you don't ask help, sometimes it's going to be hard to know what are your feelings are. That's the that's the first thing, and the second thing is that, as I said, know the basics. You don't need to know everything, but know the basic so that you can grow much faster. I promise you. So these are the two things that I will I will say. It's an example. We at Startup Bootcamp, we had a floor with 10 startups. Uh, every batch, so every batch has uh, uh, led 10 uh, companies for 10 weeks at, at our at our premises. And there were two ventures. They were sitting uh, one meter from each other, and the both technical, uh, the both CTOs were sitting back to back, yeah? just like they only turned to say hi, doing this. And then I, I had conversation with them, and 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 then I said like, so why the fuck are you? working on this for a week right now, behind you is someone who solved it two weeks ago. And he was looking at me like, oopsie daisy. Yeah, and that's a very good example of, 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 of what Emre. From an entrepreneurial perspective, never, ever, ever, ever make the mistake that you are in love of the solution you have created. Never. I made that mistake. Yeah, and I lost a lot of money because of it. You need to fall in love of the problem that you are solving. Yeah, and that's 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 a true d differentiator. Second, I always use three. So the second one is, if you start something, yeah, uh, it needs to be uh, uh, really coming out of your left toe, because the problem that you want to solve needs to come out of 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 passion. Because starting a business is not a sprint. It's not even a marathon, it's a triathlon. Yeah? When you think you've finished the marathon, hi, then you can sit on a bike for 200 kilometers. What the fuck? I thought I finished the marathon. No. And then when you finished the, the 200 kilometer, kilometer biking, hop, you can jump into, into the ocean and can swim uh, for another five kilometers. So uh, be really uh, 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 long stamina, but that that means that that if you're going to work for 100 hours a day on on, on your startup, you will eventually also be dying because it doesn't work like that. So you need to create stamina, yeah. And 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 stamina is uh, make sure that you also do fun stuff uh, in between. Now sometimes people are like, how many hours uh, do you work a week? I don't have a fucking clue. Uh, maybe 200 hours. And then I look at me. There are only two hour, 200 hours in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I make I make them happen. But I I still have a smile on my face because I love what I do. And 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 thirdly, uh, there's a famous uh, African uh, uh, proverb. It's when you want to go fast, uh, go alone. When you go uh, further, go together. Uh, starting a company on your own, don't. Please don't. Uh, it's almost impossible. Um, uh, why it is impossible right now? Uh, uh, technology is advancing in such a speed uh, that that you can't keep it up uh, when you're on your own. 
always Very find wonderful. always find find, find co-founders but make sure katrine it's not two katrines or three two, two uh, three katrines make sure they are very different make even sure that, that it's a founder who you like doing this with yeah not like on a on a on a live level but you know what i mean because <laughs> ha having good discussions is always bringing you to a next level yeah clear yeah, yeah. very clear thank you <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I would like to ask you, it's more on the management side, I think, uh, because I was wondering when you were like at this fast pace uh, startup or scale up environment, um, how are you, how do you reflect on more social aspects like social impact, diversity? How are you uh, making sure that your, your company is still like, uh, more, I think uh, for me it's personal what I'm doing right now. So for me, I, I was wondering how how you guys reflect on that. So uh, I will start uh, because UNL uh, is, is 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 solving a huge problem, especially with the the people that don't have an address. There are 2.5 million people on the planet who doesn't have an address, and that's for why they're also not connected to the financial system because they don't have a proof of address. In Africa, we are currently working on a land registration uh, technology, so using UNL from a land registration perspective to make sure people uh, can uh, register their land. Uh, in, in many cases, it's not registered or it's registered in some some sort of booklet uh, at at the, the province house, and someone with the, with the, with 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 a uh, with, with a pen can can erase it. So. Uh, and we are already on 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 that uh, quite advanced. We also are very diverse. Uh, are, we make sure that uh, a lot of uh, teams are diverse, not only in in ethical back background, female, male, but also what I just explained also to Katrine. You need to find different people because different people make a team, and a team makes a success. Exactly. I would like to add that one because the diversity in the teams are important. Because if you have one type of personality in the team, the creativity is going to lack. Yeah. So that's why you need to listen completely different ideas or perspective and try to create a harmony. And I, I believe we are doing quite good. We, or I, I started two years ago and we have zero turnover in our development team. Uh, I believe because of this harmony, because of the listening, the different ideas and try to make an impact all together yeah nice thank you uh, i work for uh for daniel at xr base so maybe yeah. i will see you of course we know nice. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. okay any other questions there are two questions in the chat uh so from alexander Krusitz, uh emre what do you mean by system can you please elaborate on it what is it how to learn and what what makes a good system if the code is a liability nice uh the system is the combination of the services right the combination of the the code so system is the big picture the code is just a small parts of it and so that's why i say the code is liability because if you create this huge function that does everything getting rid of this it's going to be impossible like the dinosaurs died like okay it's a silly it's a silly example but i hope you know what i mean so keep the code small when it's necessary if you need to do something different so that you can get rid of it not maintain it because maintaining creating the legacy then leg actually legacy is a post deferred in 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 music industry right if i was a musician my legacy would be something i would proud of but in technology legacy is something that i ashamed it shouldn't be like that we should get rid of the code that doesn't adapt the current environment and create the new one and the system what i mean you need to be able to test properly before it goes to production you need to deploy very fast they need to work together in harmony this is the system i'm talking about like a body we have different parts of we have different parts uh, in our body 
and they work in a in an harmony we are the system and the cells inside them are the code if you will yeah. Vendel, i think you wanted to ask a question or not Wendell. So uh, you're the first and only one who connected me on LinkedIn, Wendell. Hey, kudos hey. to you. Hey, hey. hey Wendell. <laughs> oh, Wendell. Hey, question. I have a question about the 72 step venture building program that you yeah. mentioned. Like, is, like, what does the step contain? Is there like any examples that you can name of those steps? And are they available online? Can we, can we like see them or uh, how does it work? So um, uh, it's, it's a little bit RIP, yeah, if, if you will, because uh, I made a, I lost a lot of money making a lot of mistakes uh, uh, being able to build those 72 steps. But uh, in, 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 in sort of in, in, in ballpark, zero to 19 is the first phase. The second phase is nine, uh, 20 to 25. Uh, uh, the, the third phase is uh, 26 to 48. And uh, the last phase is uh, 49 to 72. Zero to 19, step zero to uh, step 19, zero code is being built. Nothing. Nothing at all. And only after those conversations you have with all kinds of people, then you define what needs to look like, not a minimum. Now, we, we tend to call it a minimum lovable product. Um, um, which fits the problem that you have defined together with the people that you've been talking to. And only on step 20, 21, yeah, then you build the, the minimum level product. And then 23 and 24 and 25 is all about, are they willing to pay for it? Yeah, because without paying uh, a paying customer, you have a hobby. And then you go into the, 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 the third phase, and it means that uh, you need to cre create customers, uh, uh, not only one customer, but also scalable customers. But that's a little bit how the process looks like. There's okay. also a lot of, uh, I also use a lot of uh, uh, um, um, a liter uh, literature. Uh, I can send you like uh, four or five books, which could be really useful for you to, to, to read. Yeah? That would be great. You're Thank welcome. you. Ping me on LinkedIn. You already connected with me. Uh, yes. Send we'll me your email address, and I will send you a list of books. Great. I want to because you. you're because you're a student. I even sent you the PDFs for free. Hey. <laughs> Don't Perfect. tell anyone, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah. I want to address the last question from Hokai Man that is in uh, our uh, comment section. Hokai Man, yeah. uh, yes. To be able to gather useful information in data-driven development, you need to have a big enough sample size. How do you ensure you can get a big enough sample size? Or is this not a problem since the product is already fulfilling a big need and therefore have a big pool of potential customers? Emily, do you want to take this or do you want me to take this? Yeah, uh, so I believe Mark is, is, is best person to answer, but the, my uh, we want this. As Mark said in the beginning, you need to go and ask for this. Nobody will come to you as for this data. Therefore, only thing I can say from my perspective, your system needs to be ready to gather this data. You don't need a huge sample because we are not training AI, right? You don't, you don't need to build a neural system. You need just some data where you can analyze it. And first, you need to be able to gather this data in somewhere and a tools that you can analyze, but you need to go outside and ask but mark i believe can answer much yeah. much better from this perspective now uh, that's 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 why it's so important to 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 not build something but start uh, uh, having conversations with a lot of people uh, and 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 based on all those conversations you get feedback but you also need to to create uh, uh, some sort of what i call a support system for all the people that give you feedback and based on that support system you invite them to start using your first iteration of the product right and then yeah and, and don't uh, think your mom your dad and your your, your cousin and your, your your brothers are support system forget about it because they will always love whatever you build yeah 
it 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 is the people that 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 are really critic critical uh, towards uh, your your uh, proposed uh, solution, and but 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 the crit the, the best critics are, are the, the most critical people are also the best advisors for your future. So uh, and and if you have the support systems in those uh, in the, in, the, in the first steps, they you you will ask, you can ask them, can you have a look? Is this what we've talked about is this what you're thinking would be really useful to solve your problem and then suddenly you get the feedback that you need hope this uh, answered uh, your yeah. question uh, I hope okay so. yes thanks yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you so much mark and emma for your time and for the for the insights uh, as, a, as a thank you gesture, I would like all of us to unmute yourself and give a round of applause to our speakers. <laughs> okay. Can we unmute everybody? Everybody? <laughs> <laughs>